Hello, hello everybody. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to jump on here today and uh, forgive me, I'm still trying to get situated with everything. But I really wanted to um, just jump on here. I saw um, another friend of mine. If y'all are on the videos, just go ahead and say hello. Go ahead and say hello. And so I wanted to jump on here because I saw a post that uh, Michaela had put up earlier. And the post was talking about being worried about what other people think. Okay. She was talking about, um, you know, that sometimes we get worry about what other people think about us in such a way where it handicaps us and it keeps us from doing the will of God. And y'all, I have to be so very honest with you all tonight. I'm very, very nervous. Hey, boo. Everybody that's getting on, I want y'all to just say, um, say, hey, baby. <laughs> Let me know where y'all from. I'm watching you all on the monitors so I can read all of your comments. Okay. But I want to talk about this. Why are we worried about what other people think about us, okay? And so I think that this is a very big issue. This is a very big thing that is going on in dance ministry. We are worried about what other people are going to think about how we dance. We're worried about if other people are going to accept us in the dance ministry. We are worried about so many different things. And, and literally, it has shifted and completely taken... I will focus off of what is God thinking about us. And so, you know, right now, I'm just kind of at a point in my life. And it took, I want to share with you guys about this topic because this is something that I have consist well, I had consistently struggled with in my walk with the Lord. And so I was, I was a person that was bound. I mean, completely, all the way, utterly bound by what other people thought about me. And so we got to talk about these issues and we got to talk about these things. So right now, I want you to go ahead and just start, uh, you know, go ahead and just start tagging other dancers in this video. I want you to tag other dancers in this video because 
we have compared ourselves to other dancers. We have wondered, did we look as good as this other dancer? Did we minister as powerfully as this other dancer? And we have literally over and over and over again uh, went back and forth in our minds at some point or another to see is our sacrifice as good as the sacrifice of the, the, the next dancer. And I think that we really, 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 really insult God when we compare ourselves with each other. I feel like not only do we um not only do we get we get frustrated, we frustrate the Lord, but it is frustrating for us because living in a realm of comparison and living in a realm of worrying about what other people think is is hard. It's it's it's, it's extremely hard to be constantly worried about the opinion of others. And so I just want to have a real talk with you guys. I want to talk real. I want to share my experience. I want to share my deliverance. I want to share my testimony. Can somebody tag Michaela in this video? Because all of this video is inspired from her post. She was just kind of really thinking to herself, saying how she wished that um, people would go on and do God's will without worrying about what other people think. Why? Why are we worried about what the next man think? Why are we worried if we're good enough? Why are we worried if we're going to be accepted? Why is it that these things are plaguing us as a dance ministry? And so I called this, this message, um, uh, one dancer's cry to another because I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. So I just want to share my testimony with you guys. I want y'all to share the video. You know, as a former, and I literally, I took the time after she put the post up, I went to study and I just literally went to study and the Lord just began speaking to me. And I'm going to share this with you guys because this is, it's important. It's important. You can never go out and minister and be effective and touch and transform lives the way God has called you to touch and transform lives if you are so concerned and worried about what people think about you. And I think that this is Satan's greatest, uh, strongest tool against us as worshipers to have us bound up with, that wasn't good enough. What are they going to think about me? What are they going to say? Are they going to share my video? I, my weight is not right. I don't look the part. My garment is not like this one. This is the kind of stuff that we are struggling with and going going through in our minds and in our thoughts and and where is the what did God think was this worship acceptable to God was God receiving my worship that has to consume us versus being worried about what other people think about us and y'all I'm, I'm I just want to dive into this because for years as a Christian in a strong Bible believing church I had to deal with this I know nobody probably don't want to talk about this. Nobody don't want to deal with with what the real heart issue of some of these things are that we're dealing with. And so as a former former people pleaser and warrior, I was constantly worried about what people thought about me. And, and I want to honestly say this, that I didn't even notice that I actually had this problem until I came to Christ. Now, all the while I was in the world, all the while I was living unsaved, I could have honestly cared less about what people thought about me. If I thought my actions was going to cause somebody to talk about me, I, was, I gave them a reason. I gave a reason for you. I, I had no problems with my name being in your mouth in the world. But when I came to the, to the things of God, I was 19 years old when I got saved and literally... I feel like when I got into the things of God, this thing just encloaked me. It grabbed me by the throat and said, I'm leading you and controlling you. I came from the world, not being churched or any of that, and came into this bondage. Now, do I think that this bondage was there before salvation? Of course, yes, 100%. So I am definitely not saying that. I picked this up in the church. I'm not saying that. But am I saying that I didn't even realize I had this issue until I started dealing with church folk? Yes, that is what I'm saying. And so I, I literally, I got notes because I've been studying this since I read her post earlier. Right now, I need everybody to go and just share this video. 
tag a dancer because today is going to be the day of freedom for a lot of people. Today is going to be the day. And honestly, like I said, I didn't realize that I was struggling with this issue until I got into the church, until I got with church folks. And so prior to being saved, I really didn't have anyone looking out or watching for my behavior. I didn't have anybody that was caring or concerned about what was really going on with Rachel. I, I lived in a family where people had to work and people had to take care of bills and, and had everyday life issues. They didn't have time to be tended to the emotional needs that I had at that time. And I mean, things were just very different. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. But what I want to say is I didn't, what I didn't realize was I thought I was living my best life. I was, I thought I was living my best life as a sinner. I was living my best life to go out, to do what I did, sleep around, uh, and be the best me that I could be from the worldly perspective, from the worldly standpoint. And so I indulged in all these worldly behaviors. And, and I guess it's safe to even say that those behaviors caused me not to even think about these things. But anyway, as a child, um, I was molested. And so uh, I was molested and I was from a home uh, with, work, with, with a working parent. And so I was in desperate, desperate, dire need of attention. And I didn't know it as a child. I didn't know that I was craving this. And so when we don't get that emotional need met as a child, you become this dysfunctional adult. You become this uh, worshiper who can't really break free to worship because you're worried about what people are going to think about you. The spirit of the law could be high in the place. The spirit of the law could be ready to wreck the house. But you can't enter in because you are bound up worrying about what, if, what are people going to think about me. I literally will sit through church services and want to break free and worship, praise and worship. But I had been pumped by previous leaders that I just wanted to be seen. I had been pumped by others saying, oh, you just think you all that. And so I couldn't even break free to worship because in my mind, I was so bound. I was like, okay, am I trying to really be seen? I mean, am I really trying to, um, to for people to see me or to, to use my gift? Or, or was this a genuine desire on the inside of me? And y'all, I'm telling you, after years of being saved, Hearing people say, I just wanted to be seen, I couldn't even discern if it was God's voice or if it was my fleshly desire calling me into worship, calling me into praise. And so literally, I kid you not, I kid you not, maybe about six, seven years ago, I went to a, a junior student convention uh, with my kids' school and there was a zip line. Anybody that has zip line know you got to literally go up this long high towel, jump off the thing and trust that this zip line going to carry you through. And so literally the Lord had been dealing with me so strongly about not worrying or caring what anybody thought about me. I did not know that God was trying to deliver me to embrace my calling. All I knew is I was tired of, of struggling with this issue. I was tired of being bound. I was tired of having to go through these, these struggles. Hey, Michaela. Um, and so this is the thing. So y'all pray for me because I'm nervous about this, but I know this is going to bring forth deliverance. I know it. I know it's going to bring forth deliverance. So I really want y'all to tag somebody that need this. And so I went to the convention and I got on the zip line and I stood at the top for quite some time, just worried and fearful and vacillating about the actual initial jump off of the, 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 the little podium. And so during the process of, of the, the weeks leading up to this event, I had been feeling a strong urge and a strong tugging from the Lord to go to church prepared to minister to dance. It didn't have nothing to do with nobody else. This was about me and God. I was going to church and, and I, when I would break out into a spontaneous praise and worship, I had regular clothes on. So somebody was wrapping a scarf around me or trying to cover me so my goodies wasn't showing. But it was a very emotional time because 
I so desperately wanted to be free. And it got down to the point where in the middle of praise and worship, I will run out the church, run to my house, which is across the grass, put my dad's clothes on and run back and pray that I hadn't missed the opportunity. And this went on for months, y'all. This went on for months because I was bound with worrying what people were going to think about me. I was bound. And, and you, you can't really... You got to be honest with yourself and talk about your bondage because your freedom and deliverance is going to help somebody else get free and get delivered. And so what happened was, literally, I'm on the zip line. I'm back, going back. I'm standing on the, the podium, and I jump. It took me a long time, literally. I, I swear, it must have been about five minutes. I'm standing up there holding up the line. But I jump. And when I jump off the zip line, it broke. It broke. When I tell you it broke. And I text one of the ministers um, that I have been, uh, that have been just an inspiration to me. And I text her, I say that it broke. I feel free. And literally, I went to church that Sunday dressed in my dance clothes. And I just got to be honest. It was like, are you scheduled to dance today? And I was like, nope. I'm just, I just want to be comfortable to worship. It was the most uncomfortable, hardest thing ever because people didn't know if I was scheduled to dance. People didn't know what I was doing. So I'm sure other people were confused about what was going on. But all I know is, is the Lord told me to come ready to, to worship him. And I don't mean I had to go up to the front. I could have worshiped him right in my little corner where I sit at in church. I didn't have to go up to the front for everybody to see me. But the, what, what I want y'all to understand was the bondage of what people thought about me was greater than the Lord freeing me to go forth to minister. And so literally for the first few months of that, it was hard. I'm telling you, I went to church every Sunday dressed in my dance clothes. So I believe that my church family got used to it and they got used to seeing me in my dance clothes. But... Then, then the comments started coming. Who she thinks she is? She just want to be seen. What she thinks she do? Literally, y'all, I was being... I, I was hearing this from so many places. And it was so heartbreaking because I just wanted to worship. I just wanted to praise. And so it took such a long time to get those thoughts out of my head. And to really pray through and press through to be able to be pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. And the reason I'm making this video is because I know I'm not the only one. There are some of you right now watching this video who God is calling to be able to worship in spirit and in truth free of the opinion of man. There are some of you that God is calling right now, but there is so much bondage because of the thoughts that you allow to control you in your mind. Now, mind you, when the chitter chatter stopped from the people, the thoughts in my mind were on another level. Thinking about all the things that had been said about me, thinking about all the things that was going on on the inside because of what, had, what I had been experiencing. I couldn't cast down vain imaginations. All I could do is cry out to God because I couldn't really. It was so emotional, y'all. It was such an emotional time. When I tell y'all, this was one of the most emotional times of my life. But what I did not know was that God was beginning to birth the outward ministry in me to go forward to do what he had called me to do. Y'all, come on here. Y'all, somebody need this right now. I'm going to just go ahead. I want you to share this video because somebody's freedom is dependent on it. And I want to say this. There was nothing wrong with the people at my church. There was nothing wrong with anything that they said or what anybody might have said or what I thought they said or assumed they said. There was nothing wrong with that because God was using that to prove me. God was using that to purify my heart. It wasn't nothing about the people. It wasn't the people's fault. God was trying to get through to me to say, let me tell you something about your own self. You are more concerned about what other people think about you than you are concerned about being consumed with my glory and letting me use you to be a light to break shackles off other people's life. You are not letting me use you to bring deliverance and shift atmospheres. And I didn't know that all this time ago that God was beginning to thrust me forward into what he had called me to do. You see, I could never travel and go teach and share the gospel with other people if 
I hadn't gotten delivered those years ago. And yes, it was it was an ugly deliverance. Yes, there was times when I was laying on my face, crying and snotting, begging God, Lord, I don't want to be concerned about what people think about me. I don't want to be bound by the spirit of fear. Y'all, the spirit of fear had gripped me in such a way that I was terrified. It was paralyzing and crippling, worrying and fearing and dreading what people would think about me. And I'm saying this, because there are many of you dancers and worshipers, and I know this because you email me, you message me, and, and, and I, I, I hear you. I hear you. But God is saying today is the day of, of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. This is not an instantaneous deliverance. This is the work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling deliverance. This is you go forward terrified, knees knocking and scared. This is you go forward to minister and be who God called you to be in the midst of not feeling it. In the midst of all of what your mind telling you. In the midst of adversity. So I'm telling y'all literally for a period of at least three years. The Lord had me come to church every single Sunday with my dance clothes on. I, I don't know if it was three years or two years. I don't want to lie. But literally, for about two or three years, every Sunday, I, I went to church in my dance clothes ready to minister. And not to minister to the people. I went to minister to God. See, our gifting is something we are supposed to yield and give back to the Father. I went there to pour my love on the Father. And as I poured out my love to the Father, the people in turn got blessed. It was never, it was never about the people to me. If your worship is predicated on the people and what the people think, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. If your worship is to get up there for the people, you need to stay in that process a little bit longer. But I was at a point where, Lord, I'm going through hell and high water. And the only way I know to keep my mind and my sanity is to worship. The only thing I know is to put on the music and let my deliverance come forth as I move my feet, as I wave my hands. They got some of y'all right now that God is saying, I am calling you to take that step out and just begin to move your feet and lift your hands. This time of quarantine, the Lord wants to free you completely. The Lord wants to bring real deliverance, but I'm telling you, some people are going to come out of quarantine the same way they went in, bound up. Some people are going to go bound up. The spirit of the Lord is doing some things during this season. But if you're not in tune and if you're not in sync with God, you're going to miss your deliverance. Yes, I believe this is the hour for the church. Yes, I believe this is the time for the dancers, not forget dancers, for the worshipers to be equipped with power. Because baby, when I come out of this one, it's going to be a worship you ain't never seen before. Y'all haven't seen me do one, one dance on Facebook because I was in an accident. I'm not released to do it yet. I can't get up on here and kick up a leg. And I'm watching all of y'all videos. Literally, some of y'all videos, I got to turn off because you provoke me to worship. You provoke me. And I have to turn your video off because I can't do it yet. I can't do it. I done been tagged in all the challenges and all the dances. And I want to worship with you guys. But I can't. But I tell you the things that God is depositing within me in this season. That baby, when I come forth. And when I come out of this one. I come to shake the foundation with praise. Some of y'all got full use of your limbs, but your mind is bound. Your mind is bound because you worried about the opinions of others. You worried about what other people think about you. You, you, And then the thing is, you're really worried about the things that you have formulated in your own mind that other people are thinking about you. The truth of the matter is, people really don't think that way about you, baby. 
People don't have the time or the day to be focused on you as an individual in that way. But what it really is, is it's Satan at work and it is Satan's ploy and plot to stop you from going forth. So he's going to do everything that he can in your mind to keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Ain't nobody got to hit no hearts. Ain't nobody got to hit no likes. I could talk to myself. It's all good, but I'm going to say what I believe the Lord is telling me to say right now. This is the moment and this is the hour for the real spirit of worshipers to arise. You cannot be defined by a church building. You can no longer be bound by what people think. You can't be bound by how you look. You can't be bound by how big or small you are. You can't be bound by what garment you have. You can't be bound with pride and insecurities. This is the season where God is going to liberate and free worshipers that want and desire to really be free. I know this is not a popular message, but I'm never coming to bring you a popular message. I'm coming to bring you a message that's going to set you free. There are so many worshipers that are bound. You can't even dance but to certain music because you think the music you really want to minister to won't be accepted by the people. I decree and declare that you shall be free today in the name of Jesus. There are people right now, God has called you to even and dress a different way from other worshipers, but you are so bound by thinking you will not be accepted that you got to still wear the same thing that everybody else is wearing. Come forth and come out in Jesus name. I'm so sick and tired of us being boxed in and confound to the image that we have created. Yes, there are rules. Yes, there are guidelines. And yes, there are boundaries that we all must respect in the office of a worshiper. But what I am saying is stop limiting the creative gift that God has put inside of you because you are fearful and you are worried about what people think about you. If I was worried about what people think about me and the messages that I receive after I do these videos, I wouldn't do them. I politely delete them and keep it moving because I'm, I'm no longer bound. I'm no longer bound. And there's a whole nother worship that comes out of you when you are really free. There's a whole nother deliverance. There's a whole nother ministry that comes out of you when you have really been set free. And I'm telling you, I know what it's like to worry what people think about me, to act this way when you're with this group so they can accept you. Then when you go to this group, you act that way for this one to like you. I know what that's like. And I know the bondage that it caused. It was like they had a real worshiper trapped inside of a cage that couldn't break free. Oh, but the day that the cage came open. They got somebody right now. I'm calling you out of that cave of despair. I am calling you out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. You've been wearing those gray clothes too long. Freedom in this place. Freedom in this place. I call you out of that darkness. I call you out of that pit of despair. Every insecurity, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. Some of y'all on here right now, the Lord has called you to intercession on behalf of the dance ministry, but you don't even have time to do it. The Lord said, now you got time. You didn't have time before, but now you've got time. If you need freedom right now, if you need freedom right now, I just want you to type freedom in the comment section of this video. Come on, come on, y'all. Type freedom. 
Everybody that want to be free, the Bible said freedom is available. Everybody on this video need to be sharing it because you should want somebody to see this video to get set free right now in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you one thing. The Lord gave me scriptures to back everything that I'm telling y'all. He gave me scriptures to back it. I'm never going to get on here to give you my opinion. So I'm going to give you what the words say. The words say, don't worry about anything. That means what people think about you too. Instead, pray about everything. What are we doing? Are we praying? Are we praying for the other dancers and the other worshipers that God has de destined to come forth, but they bound up? Or are we sitting down slandering them and talking about them and having our little conversations trying to make it seem like we better than them? Oh God in this place. Oh God in this place. Woo! Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. What are we really doing here? Are we a real church? The church ain't the building. The church is Jesus Christ living inside of us. Roko Sanda. You don't even know who you are. The reason you can't worship, I heard this. The reason you can't worship is because you don't know who you are in the spirit. Roko Shanda. You don't know who you are and you don't know to who you belong. You don't know, you don't know. But let me tell you what God told me to tell you with who you are. He said, but you, you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession. This is who you are. This is who God says you are. You are chosen to worship. You are a holy generation. You are a chosen people. Come on here. Do you hear the spirit of the Lord crying out right now? Oh my God, do you understand who you are? When you understand who you are and you understand who you belong to, real worship come out of you. Because let me tell y'all something, when I really stopped caring what people thought and what I thought people thought, I was able to break out the cage. The door had always been open. The door had always been open. But I had to take my own two feet and walk out. I had to do it. The Bible says you got to work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Y'all pray right now against every glitch on this video. Because the devil does not want this thing to go forth. I'm telling you right now, he doesn't want it to go forth. And see, I, I believe right now that some of you don't even understand how much God loves you. And you can't really experience deliverance. And you can't really receive your deliverance because you don't really understand how much God loves you. See, the Lord loves us with the everlasting love. You can't do nothing to earn it. You can't be good enough. You can't be pretty enough. You can't worship strong enough. You can't worship long enough. You can't lay on your face long enough. The love of God is without restraints. It is limitless. It is matchless. It's, it's uncomparable. Oh, let me let me share this with you right now. Oh, let me find my scripture. Hold on. Let me find my scripture. I hope I put it in here. Oh, I didn't put it in here, so let me give it to y'all. It's in Jeremiah 31 3. It says, Yes, I have loved you with the everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. We didn't get to worship God on our own. We didn't kick up a leg and say we want to do this on our own. We were drawn into God. He said he drew us. The Bible tells us no man can't come to God unless he draw us. So all of this worship and all of this stuff that we got is not our own. It's not, it's not our own. It's not our own. We didn't give this ability to ourselves. It was his love. 
that drew us in. So if God is drawing us into worship, how can we be bound by what other people think about us? How? How can we be bound? How can we be bound? Some of y'all might not even be praise and worship dancers, but you're bound up and you can't be used to do the will of God because you are consumed with what man thinks about you. Okay, right now, if you want freedom, type freedom in the comment section of the video. I promise y'all, I go back and I pray. I pray for the people that, that say they want to be free, that say they want to repent, that want to be delivered. I'm not playing games with this. This is serious to me. Quarantine has been the best thing that ever happened to me. Not saying why we're quarantined, but this time to be alone with God and to be able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying without the distractions of men has been the best thing that ever happened to me. To be able to have my busy lifestyle hit the brakes and the Lord bring, bring I be able to hear his voice clearly is how I'm able to get on here. I was able to sit down and put this together in a, in a couple of hours because the Lord... Rushed in like a mighty wind. When I read Michaela's post. When I read Michaela's post. I said this is not a pretty thing. When you need to be delivered. From. They, they got some of y'all that. You just want to be in the background. But God is saying come forth. It's time for you to come from in the back. And in the shadows. And come forth. Somebody, I don't know who it is on this video right now. Somebody needs to come forward. You played the role of the background. You played the role of not wanting to be seen and all this stuff. And the Lord is saying, if how can I use you to impact others if they can't see you because you hiding in the back? And you are worried about what others think about you. So this scripture, this scripture is for you. Let me find it. Come on, y'all pray for me because I'm I'm trying hard, but I see that I'm I'm actually missing scriptures right now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It says it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think about you. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. He said, it's dangerous. It is dangerous for you to be caught up with what somebody else think about you. So let's back this train up. If I'm worried about what you think about me, the Lord is telling me that is danger to my soul. That is danger to my growth. That is danger to my relationship with him. It is dangerous. You tread bad terrain with God when you let what other people think move you more than what the spirit of the Lord thinks somebody right now need to type in the comments I repent I could never tell y'all this some years ago I could never get on here and talk about this topic I don't believe in touching nothing that the Lord ain't worked out and delivered in me first but I'm telling you right now, some of y'all need to put in the comment section, I repent because this is for you. This is for you. This is not to bash you. This is not to put you down. This is for real freedom. We done played games and went to the altar and not got delivered and left out and went back the same way. This is time where you can get on your face in your own house, in a comfort and privacy in your own home and lay out and say, God, deliver me now. I need a right now deliverance. I need a right now change. But some of you are just so consumed with man's affirmation. You're so consumed with man's approval of you. You are so so consumed with what some it was if somebody say, Oh girl, that was so powerful when you ministered, that when they don't say that. You feel like you, didn't, you weren't even effective because somebody didn't pat you on the back. Because you didn't hear the applause of man in the form of words of affirmation. Oh, 
Shando Roboko Sende. I ain't going to get no shares for this. I ain't going to get no likes. I ain't going to get nobody to be uh wanting to be my friend for this, but it's okay. But you need to go ahead and share this video. You might not struggle with this area, but there's so many people in worship and praise dance that do. Share the video for them. I got to give you one more scripture. I got to give you one more scripture. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, when I tell y'all this thing right here, I don't even see all my scriptures. Here we go. I'm adding them right now, though. I'm not about to... Um, I'm not about to be moved right here. It says in Psalms chapter 118, verse 8, it says, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Where am I going with this? It's better for you to go ahead and find your sanctity and your and hide in the presence of Lord, the Lord than to trust in the words that you want to hear from man. Some of y'all don't even believe that you're that good of a minister of dance because people told you things or people spoke stuff over you or you you don't get the, or the praise that you see other people get. So you don't even think that you are called anymore. But the Lord is saying that's a lie. The Lord is saying that's a, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. You are called. You are good enough. My God, my God, all I have when I come on here is scriptures to give y'all. All I have is because the word of God is the only thing that gave me peace. As I was going through this process and I was allowing the Lord to deliver me from the fear of man, people pleasing, uh, 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 performing for people, love and attention. I, it was all rooted in rejection. It was all the root cause of all of these surface issues was I really grew up a rejected child. And all the other stuff I was dealing with was just surface issues. It wasn't, it was, that was the surface, but the root cause was there was a lot of rejection that I had to deal with. And so when the law was able to get the, and break free from that, from the rejection and, and to let me know that I was accepted, then his peace came. And I've got to give you this scripture because this is what really helped me right here. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. I had to go back and start believing and trusting that, yes, God called me. No, God didn't call me to want to be seen. Even though those things had been spoken over me and I began to believe them, that was lies of the enemy to divert me from what God had called me to be. He said he was going to keep me in perfect peace. And so what began to happen is when those thoughts came up, the, I now had the power to cast down the thoughts because God was giving me peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. He was giving me strength to be able to go forward when, when I was uh, not feeling it the peace came and once the peace of God came it was so easy y'all I'm not gonna lie at that point it began to be easy now literally I don't care where I'm at your church my church in the street or the grocery store if the spirit of the law say worship you could best believe I'm going all the way in you could ask anybody that know me I'm going all the way in I'm not holding back nothing so if you're one of them people that don't want to be embarrassed or ashamed, you can't hang with me. Because literally, it don't matter when, where, or how. If any of my group is on here, they can start testifying in the comments. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. Because when the peace of God comes, it transcends human understanding. When you got real peace, it's not predicated on what nobody say about you, how you feel about yourself, what you think about yourself. Because all you're thinking about is what God is saying. God is steadying you through that storm. He steadied me through that transition and that process for me to come out on this side to be able to make this video. There ain't no way I could have made this video five years ago. Because I would have been scared that somebody was going to see this video and think I was talking about them. Oh, kind of. I, I, there's no way but the lord gave me this final scripture that i have to give to y'all this final scripture sums it all up right here this scripture says am i saying all this now to win the approval of people 
or God? Am I trying to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be Christ's servant. Rokashende. That there's a fine line there. You cannot be Christ's servant and still be trying to please people. There's no way. You can't do the both. I always say you can't serve two masters. You're going to love the one and hate the other because that's what the scriptures say. You cannot serve the people and God. Saul said to, to Samuel, uh, after he had sinned and didn't obey God the way he was told to, to, to sacrifice and kill all the Am Amalekites, he didn't do that. But he tells uh, the prophet Samuel, just come and, 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 and approve me before the people. Worship with me before the people. I don't, if God ain't in it, I don't need to be in it. If I done disobeyed, I don't need to cover it up. The Lord clearly said in this scripture, he said, if I was still trying to please people, I would not be Christ's servant. So this is a, another problem why some can't worship because you are still trying to please the people. So you, if you're trying to please the people, you can't please God. Mm. 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 Right now, right now, if you say, Sister Rachel, I'm struggling. I, I'm, I'm struggling and I'm dealing with this. I'm struggling and I'm dealing with this. I have I have struggled with people pleasing. I've str struggled with worrying about what other people think about me. I have struggled. I have struggled. I have struggled. Right now, this is the time to repent because the Lord wants to free us. He wants us to be worshipers that can go forth with power. We can't go forth with power if we're bound up. If you're, if you're consumed with the worry of, of what others think about you or the fear of man, or if you're a people pleaser, I'm telling y'all, I know what this bondage is like. I know what this bondage is like. And all I can tell you is freedom feels so good. And right now, if you say, Lord, I, got, I can't do it no more. Now, one more day, will I be bound? I want you to go again. And just type freedom in the comment section of this video. Freedom in the comment section of this video right now. These scriptures that they are putting in the comments, I want y'all to, if this is your struggle, these are your scriptures. If you say, Sister Rachel, I need these scriptures, I will send each one of the screens to you with the scriptures on it. So you memorize them. You quote them. We can only fight with the sword of the spirit. Okay, come on. If right now, if you say, you know, I struggle, come on, put it in the comments. Do not be ashamed. Say, I struggle. I got to be free. I want to be free. Come on. Today is the day of salvation and deliverance. If you leave this video the same way you got on it, it's your own fault because God set this up. This wasn't even on my plan or agenda today. Come on, type freedom. I want you to say it out of your mouth. If you are at home, I want you to say, I do not want to be bound. Why should we be bound when the Son of Man came to set us free? Jesus came for real freedom. He said that even now, John chapter 4, verse 24, I am raising up worshipers that are going to worship me in spirit and in truth. It is time out for the worshiper being worried about what somebody thinks. When we get to go back into our churches, you need to be tearing up the ground, shaking the ground with praise. You need to be busting through the aisles. You don't need the praise team to buck you up. You don't need nobody to hype you. You need to go ready. Oh, when we come out of quarantine, we're going to worship for real. We're going to worship for real. You better get it all out now. You better get it all out now. Go ahead and confess with your mouth. The Bible says we got to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. And that confession is made unto salvation. Confess it out of your mouth that I am free. Say it right now out of your mouth. I'm going to pray for y'all. I'm going to pray for y'all. But I, I, I'm going to pray for everybody in the comments. We're going to have prayer on here in just a minute. But if you know that this word was for you, and I'm, I do this on a video now because I be led to do it. I'm asking y'all to sow a seed. Keandra, you could throw the cash app in there. We're going to pray for every single person on this video. But if God is ministering to you, not Sister Rachel, 
sow a seed. Amen. I, I want to go ahead and just start praying for y'all. And I know people don't like when you talk about money, but I, I, I'm a faithful, I'm faithful in sowing seed and I'm faithful to receive a harvest. I, I, I got so much seed planted that this time of famine is not even touching me. I got all kind of video uh, testimonies on my page from a few weeks ago when we did a video of people that sowed seed and got miracles. One lady said she didn't have no food in her house. I think she sold a dollar or a dollar 75 and the people, somebody knocked on her door with groceries that lasted her. I don't know how long filled up her house in her refrigerator. I'm good ground. <laughs> right now, I'm going to pray for each and every one of y'all. Each and every one of y'all. Right now, wherever you are, I want you. I want you literally to just really put yourself in a place. I don't know if you got to go in your bathroom. I don't know if you got to walk outside, but you need to get somewhere where we can pray. You need to get somewhere where you're not about to be distracted. You need to get somewhere where nobody is going to be able to disturb what's about to happen right now. Come on, get there, get there, because we're about to shift right now. Come on. Pray for my music because I'm trying to switch it and I'm having some problems. We're about to shift. We're about to shift right here. Right here, we're about to shift. Oh, Kanda. Kanda. Father, right now, Lord. Lord, we come praying. Lord, we are praying for a mighty move of your spirit in every place that we sit right now. Lord, we say that we do not want to be bound by the fear of man. Lord, we no longer want to be bound by what other people think about us. Lord, we no longer want to be bound, God, by our worship being restrained because we're afraid of what people are going to think about us. We're afraid of how people are going to look at us. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you will begin to break this bondage off of your people in the name of Jesus. Break this bondage now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we call out and ask for real freedom today. Freedom in our minds from the way we've been raised. Freedom from the things that have been spoken over us. Freedom from the rejection and the abandonment that we have struggled with. Oh God, we want real freedom. Lord, we're going to stretch out. We're going to lay out. We're going to cry out until you deliver us. We're going to cry out till we get set free. We desire to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. So we call on your name right now. We call on a name that's above every name. That's the name that brings freedom. That's the name that brings deliverance. Oh God, we call on the name of Jesus. Oh, we call on the name of Jesus. There's no freedom found anywhere else, Lord. There's no freedom, no other place, God. So we ask you right now, that you send the Holy Spirit to bring deliverance. Come on, some of y'all got to just go ahead and start worshiping right now. The Lord is saying just start worshiping him right now. As you dance, it's broken right now. Oh, Come on, come on, come on. This for you. This for you. Come on. Come on. Oh, ba, 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 Can you hear the music? Don't be hindered. Jesus. Don't be hindered right now. Come on. You don't need no hype music. You don't need a hype song. This gotta be a real heart cry. Go, 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 go worship. No wonder they see hey. your name. Hey. The 
There's no other beautiful name for you. Oh, the name of Jesus. Jesus. I'm just an initiator. Some of y'all probably got to get off this video and go find your place of worship right now. Some of y'all got to go do it. Some of y'all got to get off this video right now and go worship. But I'm asking you guys, if this video has been a blessing to you, if something helped you, if something that was said, something that was one of the scriptures, anything, I, I want to ask y'all to don't forget to sow a seed. Oh, wait, I forgot. I don't want y'all to forget to sow a seed. Be a blessing so that we can keep doing this. So I can keep getting on here. It, it technology costs. It, it takes money to put classes together and seminars together and things together, teachings and, and, and to help train up worshipers. And so if this broadcast was a blessing to you, I'm asking y'all to sow a seed. Anything helps. I'm not asking for no thousands of dollars, but I'm saying if you got free and you got a blessing, be a blessing back in return. I love y'all.